Now, how is myocardial ischemia actually diagnosed in a 12 lead ECG? We'll understand in this particular video. Welcome to another session on ECG sadhana. In the previous session, we've discussed about the electrophysiologic mechanisms of generation of ST elevations, ST depressions, the development of Q waves, all of which are findings in cardiac ischemia. If you have not watched that video yet, I would suggest that you watch that video after this particular one. In this particular video, we're going to discuss from the clinician's perspective, how exactly can you pick up cardiac ischemia? I am Dr. Naman Agrawal. Let's get started. A very important concept for you to understand is that whenever you are interpreting ECG in an emergency setting, always see the clinical picture first. So if the patient presents to you with features suggestive of cardiac ischemia and you see some diagnostic criteria on the ECG, then is the point where you diagnose ST elevation myocardial infarction. So what are these criteria? For the diagnosis of ST elevation myocardial infarction, you should have an ST elevation at the J point, which is at least one millimeter in at least two contiguous leads. So there are three or four different things which you need to understand. So first of all, what is the J point? The point where the QRS complex ends is called the J point. The ST elevation is measured at the J point. So you measure the ST elevation from the ECG's baseline and the ECG's baseline is the TP segment. So if this is the T wave and here, if we assume that there is a P wave here from the next complex, this is the TP segment. If you extrapolate this segment, to the J point, you see that the J point is slightly elevated above the baseline. So you measure the distance from the TP segment to the amount of ST elevations at J point. And if you find that it's, it is at least one millimeter, that means that that's abnormal. Now these ST elevations should be seen in at least two contiguous leads. Now we have discussed about the orientation of the chest leads and the limb leads in a previous video. Do check the link in the description below. So if you find that the ST elevation at J point in two contiguous leads is at least one millimeter. In a clinical setting of cardiac ischemia, you should think about an ST elevation myocardial infarction. This criteria for one millimeter does not apply in lead V2 and V3 because some amount of ST elevation is actually normal in these two leads. So a higher threshold is required for abnormality. So if you find that the ST elevations are at least 2.5 millimeters in males of certain age, or if it is more than 1.5 millimeters in females, then you diagnose it as STEMI. So this is how you diagnose ST elevation uh, myocardial infarction. Now, if you can see in the other bits, this is the T wave, this is the P wave somewhere here. This is the TP segment, which I have extrapolated. You see, this is the point where the uh, QRS complex has ended. And the, hence, this is the J point. You can see that there is a significant ST elevation here. Next example. Now you can see here that the baseline probably is not linear. In such cases, we can roughly consider the PR segment as the baseline. And if this is the baseline, this is the point where the QRS complex ends. So this is the J point. And you can see these massive ST elevations. So this is a tombstoning pattern of ST elevation. So all these are examples of ST elevation myocardial infarction. Now another finding in ECG for diagnosis of STEMI is reciprocal ST depressions. Whenever you have a doubt that this ST elevation is because of STEMI or some other cause, this is very suggestive of the possibility of STEMI. Another thing, sometimes the reciprocal ST depressions actually precede the development of ST elevations. So you may not find significant ST elevations yet because the clinical course is evolving, but you may find reciprocal depressions which are very, very prominent. And hence the, these can help you in suspecting myocardial infarction. Another thing, sometimes the amount of ST depressions actually helps you in seeing that how much area of myocardium is at risk. For example, if it is a left anterior descending occlusion, if the ST depressions in inferior leads are more than one millimeter, it is suggestive of a proximal LED occlusion which means that more of the myocardium, more of the left ventricle is at risk of cardiac ischemia and in infarction. Now, if we see ST elevations in a set of chest leads or limb leads, we can localize that which area of the heart is actually affected by the ischemia. So if we see ST elevations in V2, V3, V4, more importantly, V3, V4, we mean that there is an anterior wall ischemia, which is ongoing. If we see ST elevations in V1, V2, which is facing the septum, if the inferior wall has got infarcted, we see ST elevations in lead 2, 3 AVF. The lateral wall is pointed towards by V5, V6 and 1 in AVL. 
and corresponding to these there are some reciprocal leads which means that you will find reciprocal st depressions in lead 2 3 and avf in case of an anti rest stemi if you find st elevations in 2 3 avf in an inferior wall stemi you are very likely to find st depressions in lead 1 avl v2 v3 which are the reciprocal leads to the inferior lead now as you can see there are no leads which are placed posteriorly so there is no ecg lead which can directly look at the posterior wall of the heart so you can see that facing leads are none however we can place some extra leads beyond v6 that is v7 v8 v9 which can actually look at the st elevations in the posterior wall even a 0.5 mm st elevation in the posterior leads is enough for the diagnosis of posterior wall mine however in a standard 12 lead ecg you will see that v1 and v2 are placed anteriorly so these become the reciprocal leads of posterior wall so if you see st depression in v1 and v2 you should have a high index of suspicion for the diagnosis of posterior wall myocardial infarction similarly the right ventricle is not directly represented by the set of the 12 leads which we obtain in the ecg but if you find if but if you obtain additional right sided chest leads uh, the v4r is considered the most specific lead for the diagnosis of right ventricular myocardial infarction now this is an example of the patient who presented to the emergency with chest pain of 4 hours duration we can see that there are significant st elevations in lead v1 lead v2 lead v3 there are st depressions in lead 2 3 and avf so we can say that this patient has got an anterior stemi and there are reciprocal st depressions in the inferior leads in the next example you can see that the st elevations are seen in the inferior leads that is lead 2 has got st elevation lead 3 has got st elevation lead avf has got significant st elevations which means that this has got an inferior wall stemi in addition you can see that there are st depressions in lead v1 and v2 and if you can recall the st depressions in v1 and v2 suggests the involvement of posterior wall so in addition to the inferior wall the patient also has got a posterior wall mi as you can also see that there are reciprocal st depressions in lead 1 and lead avl down here you can also see that we have obtained right sided lead however you don't see any st elevations in lead v4 you do see some st elevations in lead v4 v5r and v6r so possibly the patient also has got a right ventricular myocardial infarction so this is how we diagnose stemi on the ecg but you need to understand some pearls and pitfalls the clinical context in which the ecg has been obtained and the ecg has been interpreted is very very important Now the next point is that not all st elevations are myocardial infarctions there is a list of n number of conditions which can lead to st elevations in the ecg though in the previous slide where we considered the diagnostic criteria it is not just the amount of st elevation it's more important to recognize a particular morphology rather than just taking the calipers and measuring the amount of st elevation for example consider these three ecgs what are all these myocardial infarctions actually no you can see that this the second and third ones are concave upwards st elevations something like this however the st elevation here is more straight up rather than concave this is an st elevation of myocardial infarction that is stemi this is an example taken where the patient had acute pericarditis and this is an ecg of a patient with early repolarization syndrome despite the fact that the st elevation is minimal in the first example this is the st elevation you should not miss the morphology is very different so in addition to the amount of st elevation on the ecg the focus should be more on the morphology though we discussed in the previous video that a complete occlusion of the coronary artery leads to st elevation myocardial infarction but that is not always true there are many conditions in which a complete occlusion causing myocardial infarction that is called the occlusion mi may present without an st elevation last but not the least an ecg can be normal in myocardial infarction in up to 7 to 10% of the cases and hence serial ecgs are very important myocardial ischemia is a dynamic condition so if you obtain an ecg right now and you find that this is not diagnostic but you have got a high index of suspicion based on the clinical presentation again you should actually repeat the ecg after some time so if any of this happens if the chest pain of the patient worsens if the chest pain of the patient improves if you see that there is an overall clinical worsening do repeat the ecg
many times the first ecg is not the one which picks up myocardial infarction it's the subsequent ecgs which pick up the stemi talking about some other ecg changes we have discussed that q waves are an, an important ecg uh, manifestation of acute coronary syndrome to make it simple for you guys any amount of q wave is normal in lead 3 and lead avr but if you find that the q wave is present in any other lead and it is at least 1 mm wide it is pathological now these q waves usually develop some hours to days after the development of an occlusion myocardial infarction but mind you again this is not the rule and sometimes the q waves can be seen as early as 30 minutes after the coronary occlusion so the presence of q waves do not mean that the infarction is completed and this is not the indication to withhold a particular reperfusion therapy now the t waves can have various morphologies there could be hyperacute t waves there could be uh, reperfusion t waves i'll probably have a different video discussing about the various killer t waves in the emergency department now a word about non st elevation myocardial infarction this happens because of an incomplete coronary artery occlusion and which leads to subendocardial ischemia so typically the description is a down sloping or a horizontal st depression of at least 0.5 mm again in two contiguous leads or if there are t wave inversions they should be at least 1 mm deep but mind you it's more important to focus on the morphology rather than on the values and the measurements another important finding is that there should not be any sustained st elevations in ecg for the diagnosis of n stemi transient st elevations however can still be noted in these patients perhaps the most important bit whenever you're diagnosing a non st elevation acute coronary syndrome is to beware of hidden stemis sometimes the st elevations may be hidden or they may not be present at all and there are prominent st depressions either reciprocally or otherwise and hence you diagnose these patients as n stemi but unfortunately they are occlusion myocardial infarction so you have to be aware of these conditions some of the examples include an isolated posterior wall myocardial infarction an early inferior stemi where the st elevations in the inferior leads has not yet come but you find profound st depressions in lead avl lead 1 lead v2 v3 etc in the left main coronary artery occlusion you may not see any st elevations if you miss seeing the lead avr AVR could be the only lead where you find ST elevation. Rest all the eleven leads you'll find ST depressions. So there are profound ST depressions. But actually, this is not a non-STEMI. This is because of an occlusion myocardial infarction of the left main coronary, and these patients have a very high risk of mortality and going into cardiogenic shock. Now, sometimes the patients with acute coronary syndrome present very early, and you find a pattern which is something like this: there is a prominent R wave, then there is an ST depression followed by a prominent T wave. this st depression is actually up sloping rather than horizontal or down sloping this is what is called the devinter's pattern t waves and these are suggestive of an acute lad occlusion now you also have to be aware of some mimics of non stemi and these could be a massive pulmonary embolism or a significant aortic dissection these can lead to significant st depressions in the presence of chest pain so you may falsely diagnose these conditions as non stemi now let's see this example once this patient presented to Uh, the emergency with some typical ischemic sounding chest pain you really don't see any significant st elevations anywhere however you see that there is a t wave inversion and an st depression in lead avl is this n stemi actually not if you focus more carefully in lead 3 there is a slight st elevation at the j point though this may not meet the diagnostic criteria of 1 mm as per the guidelines but this morphology is slightly concerning the presence of this st depression and t wave inversion in the lead avl is a very subtle early indicator that the patient can actually have an inferior wall stemi uh, once we repeated the ecg on this particular patient we had full blown st elevations in the inferior leads with complete heart block so this is a very crucial example for you to understand that whenever in the setting of cardiac ischemia you see st depressions not all st depressions are non stemi first step is to actually look out if this could be a stemi i hope the today's video about the discussion of diagnosis of stemi and non stemi was informative if you like the video do hit the like button do subscribe to the ecg sadhana channel for more such interesting discussions on cases concepts and challenges about emergency ecgs i hope to see you in the next video until then stay healthy and keep saving lives